swipe in the card just freely wherever I want and the next thing you know my savings is gone my trip to Dubai it, it didn't flew by because I didn't went to stake 48 and I went to all over the place and no we don't want to do that love okay so I'm so happy to be back on YouTube I know that I've been gone for a minute and I have not been recording but I just want to say I'm back period okay so I do have some how to save your money tips today so that's what we're going to be talking about they're gonna be some very easy steps that are going to get you in the right path to being on your money savings challenge so if you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe on this video. I mean, how you gonna comment and you ain't, you need to be watching the video. So never mind, just go ahead and click the subscribe button so you can stay tuned and um, be ready for more advice videos that I have for you guys. So I wrote down four easy steps. Okay, I literally wrote everything down. Okay, so step number one to saving your money is you want to create a list or multiple list of things that you want to save your money for. Having a reason to save your money is very important and it's also going to continue to motivate you to stay on your journey and keep track of everything that you're doing. Um, it's dangerous not to have reasons to save your money because... You're just going to end up splurging your money on something that you didn't even need, like an impulse buy. For example, I could have my goal to be, I want to take a trip to Dubai. So I'm going to save up $5,000. If I didn't have that goal, my $5,000 is just sitting there. And now I'm scrolling through Instagram on my phone and I see Rihanna got the latest I don't know Chanel bag and I'm like dang I want that Chanel bag like that's fire and Rihanna got it so I want to have it so now I'm purchasing this $5,000 Chanel bag and that's not even what I had my mind set on um, or you just end up spending your money on other unnecessary things next thing you know your five bands is gone but if you write down hey I want to save then you already know I'm not touching that money because that money's for my trip we can do more than one. That's cool. <laughs> we already got past step number one. So step number two, you want to write down the goal of how quick you want to save your money. So yeah, my goal is to save $5,000, but I'm going to go ahead and give myself two years to save up that money for that trip to Dubai. Or I want to take that trip to Dubai next year, so I need to set it up for next year. You need to know exactly what your deadline is going to be, so you know how much money every month or every two weeks you need to put into your goal. You want to ask yourself, how often will you save? You want to save bi-weekly? You want to save weekly? Or you want to save monthly? So the longer you give yourself to reach your goal, the less amount of money you have to take out of your paycheck or your, your extra income to put into that um, challenge every month, if that makes sense. So if you want to save monthly, then you might want to give yourself a longer period of time because if you're trying to take this trip to Dubai in a year, then you're going to have to <laughs> literally... The, the number of paychecks that you have, you're going to have to divide that by 5,000. And then it'll give you whatever number you get. That number is going to be the amount of money that you're going to have to pull out of your paycheck every week, probably. If you want to break it down, because it's going to be a large amount of money for your trip. So the longer you give yourself, the easier the challenge will be. Because the less amount of money you will have to save per challenge, if that makes sense. Especially if you're doing more than one challenge at a time. So, yeah. Um, obviously, know the amount of money that you want to save. So, that's kind of important, too. It's cool to save over your challenge, but it's just cool to have a goal. And most things you want to save for, you know how much they cost. So, yeah. Just 
keep that number in mind. But I do want to say, before we continue, everyone needs to have a $1,000 um, emergency fund set aside. You want to have a $1,000 emergency fund set aside for emergencies before you start planning trips to Dubai or planning to buy that Chanel bag or planning to, I don't know, get a new car or whatever else it is. Make sure you always have $1,000 set aside for emergencies. Don't forget that, y'all. Emergency funds. Step number three. You want to deposit your funds without easy access. Okay, so this is so crucial. You cannot be saving money when you have access to just spend it. Because let's let's keep it real. Sometimes I be wanting to dip into my little funds when I'm like, no, no, no. That's for your goal for this. Like, don't touch it. But like, if I don't have easy access to it, it won't, it's very less likely that it's going to happen. So let me give you some examples. So the bank, I know you're like, oh, I put my money in the bank. No, the bank. <laughs> you can open up a savings account with the bank, preferably a credit union. I say a credit union because you can get more dividends up to actually 1% back on the money that is sitting in those accounts. Regular banks like Chase and... Bank of America, they only give you like 0.2% or 0.5%. So open you up a savings um, account. When you open up a savings account, do not get a debit card to this account. This is another major red flag. You do not want to, that's easy access. If I have a debit card to this account, then I can just be swiping the card just freely wherever I want. And the next thing you know, my savings is gone. My trip to Dubai, it, it didn't flew by because I didn't went to State 48 and I went to all over the place. And no, we don't want to do that. Okay, we don't want to do that. So let's go to the bank and get a savings account and no debit card to the savings account. Don't get no debit card. Because even if you did have to dip into it, it's not going to be on the weekends because the banks are closed on the weekends. And that's normally when people want to dip and dabble into their savings to go out and stuff. So no, you're not going to be doing that because the banks are closed on the weekends. Then it's going to be more of a hassle because you're going to have to actually go inside of the bank. It's not as much of an ease as just swiping a card. So definitely do not have any cards linked to that account. Okay, so... The next option is going to be my infamous um, Tide Pod Savings Challenge. Y'all know, y'all seen the video. If you haven't seen it, please check it out on my channel. I was putting my money in there, you know. I had a little slit and I was putting my money in there. And I taped it off real good so I didn't have access to it. And if you don't have that, you can also use a bottle. Like a Patron bottle. You can even use a, a jug of water. Seal the top closed, put a slit in it, put your money in there like that. You don't have easy access to the money. Especially with a wine a wine bottle, you're going to have to literally smash it. It's going to be a hassle. That's the hassle, you know? With the plastic, you have to cut it open. So, yeah, that's exactly why that method works amazing. And I'm living proof of all of these methods that I'm telling you guys. I would not tell you something that I don't use myself. That's period. <laughs> okay, so the next option as far as being able to deposit your money without easy access would be to put your funds into a trade account. I know y'all are probably like, girl, what? Put my money in a trade. No, listen to me. Put your money in a trade account. Like Robinhood, Fidelity, E-Trade, Webull. These are um, platforms where you can link your bank account, okay, the savings account that we set up at the bank at the credit union, remember? Yeah, we're linking that account to our um, Robinhood. This is making it even, even more difficult for us to get to it. So we already didn't have a card to the credit union account. So now we're going to boop, 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 boop. We, we going to transfer it over to the Robinhood, the E-Trade, Right? So you can set it up, you know, use your account, your routing number so that way you'll be able to make transfers from the trading app to your um, bank account. And once that money is in your trading account, you don't have to invest in stocks. 
you can just let the money sit there. They're not going to touch it. They're not going to do nothing to it. You're not going to be taxed or anything. If you, if you want to, you can make even more money and help your challenge even more by investing that money into the stock market if you know how to do that. Or, you know, work, work some numbers. You can possibly make money off that money sitting there. But you don't have to. You want to deposit the money from your bank account into the trade account and the money can just sit there. And then whenever you're done with your challenge, you can withdraw that money directly back to your bank account whenever you're ready. So there might be like a small fee, maybe like $5 or something. But the point is to get your money as less accessible to you as possible. Because even if you really did need that money for whatever you wanted to spend on an impulse buy it's going to take five to seven business days for that money to transfer for back from your trade account over to your bank account so yeah way less access to that money so that's a great choice as well so i have one more um, way for you to be able to save your money without easy access mainly for people that work nine to fives anybody that gets a direct deposit to their account from their job. So you can set up what is called a split deposit. This is a great option for someone that typically works and gets paid direct deposit from their job. When you get hired through your employer, you have to fill out a direct deposit form. If you do not fill that out, the company will offer you their own credit card or a debit card of some type for them to load your money on for you to get paid but the problem with those cards are they charge you enormous fees every time you swipe the card they're charging you a fee every time you go to the ATM machine they charge you a fee so it's set up not that good so most people do direct deposit so what you can do is you can ask your employer when you get hired or even if after you're hired I think all you have to do is contact HR and just let them know, hey, I would like to set up um, a split deposit with my paycheck. You let your job know, hey, this is my bank. I gave you my account, my routing number. And so this is where y'all need to transfer my money. To. So, yeah, that's step number three. Y'all see me flipping my notes. I told y'all I got everything down. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, thank you guys so much for, I think I like 7K views on my um, Tide Pod Challenge videos. So thank you guys, I love y'all. And I'm gonna be uploading more, I promise. Okay? Okay, so sorry, let's get back on track. Step number four. <laughs> Think about extra sources of income. Remember I was saying that? This is gonna help us reach our goal quicker. If you have multiple sources of income, then you will have more money to be able to put towards your savings and you will be able to reach your goals faster. When we reach our goals faster, we're elevating in life. When we're elevating in life, we're happy. When we're happy, we're peaceful. So you have to stick to your what you say you're going to do. You can't half ass do something and expect the results to be great. You can't do that. So you have to be disciplined with this. For instance, um, the money that you're accumulating from your side hustles, you can automatically just throw that money into your savings because it's a side hustle. You should be living off of your nine to five or I wouldn't even say nine to five, but whatever your main source of income is, that's what you can live off of. And then everything else needs to be um, pretty much sa saved, saved up. Yep. <laughs> saved up. Yep. Okay. So... Yes, those were my four steps there on how to save your money. Okay, so let's run back through it. Let's just go ahead and do a recap. Okay, so step number one was create a list or multiple lists of what you want to save your money for. You want to have a reason why you're saving your money. Step number two is give yourself a deadline so you know how much money you need to save per month, per week, or bi-weekly for your challenge. Step number three, make sure that your money is not easily accessible to you. Make sure you can deposit it somewhere where you do not have easy access to it for impulse buys. Step number four, make sure you have multiple sources of income. If you have multiple sources of income, you will be able to reach your savings goals faster. 
so thank you guys so much for watching please stay tuned for the next video um comment below if you guys enjoyed this and if you guys want to hear more about how i save my money and just let's do this together y'all i'm always doing money saving challenges like they never end and I just thank God for, you know, letting me be able to have a disciplined mindset. Well, sometimes I do slip up too. Y'all gonna hear about my slip ups. I'm gonna be doing some, some videos about that. But yeah, I'm new to YouTube. So your feedback is very, very appreciated. Thank you for all the people that take the time out to watch my content. I love you guys my subscribers my little 180 subscribers i love you guys so much and all my new subscribers thank you i appreciate you guys and just stay tuned for the next video because your girl gonna be back okay she gonna be back let me know if you guys want a part two to this video like more details and more in depth like i said that's step four i'm gonna break that down for y'all okay so comment down make sure y'all like this video thank you guys so much for watching bye mm -hmm.